Today I am going to address uh, an overheating issue I have been having for a number of years and finally I have come to the conclusion that it is my oil cooler which is partially plugged and not uh, cooling like it should. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out and the reason I'm making this video is I went through my big fat uh, technical manual, shop manual, service manual, and I could find nothing about the oil cooler. It barely mentioned it. Um, this is a Hitachi EX120-2. It looks like uh, it's going to be the same procedure for everything that's in this uh, age and class range. Um, so what to do? So we got a couple of clamps, one there, and then one inside here, you can kind of see it in there, uh, that I'm gonna have to uh, take off in order to drain the cooler itself. And I think there's just a few bolts and I, hopefully it'll pull right out, but that's yet to be seen. What we have here is, this is how the uh, new oil cooler came and it's in this nice box i had just replaced the uh, radiator as well it came in a similar box and that's the new cooler straight from china and part of the reason i think that this is going to be very similar for most machines is you look here at their numbers it says 100 dash two slash three or 120 dash two slash three but also on the side it says ex 120 dash one so i think it fits three different models of the hitachi early market uh, excavators and we'll see if how this goes in but i'm going to take some clues from the way this is built as to how I need to get it out. We got these lugs here. Now this is an all aluminum uh, radiator. I've took the magnet to it already. And it looks like that's the only thing that attaches it outside of the clamps that are right here. On those clamps, I am going to guess that they are possibly, um, there's a rubber gasket that goes on either side. And I'm gonna guess that that rubber gasket's probably failed. Uh, I'll take a look at it when I get it apart. Uh, I got a, a very good uh, seal and gasket place here in town. So if uh, that's the case, I'll check with them. And if I can't get it there, then I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it from John Deere Hitachi. So we'll see how this goes. So here's the first discovery. Uh, I was getting some supplies ready. Uh, anticipating that when I break that connection at the bottom, this is where the fluid comes in and is forced up through the top and out that point. Anyways, as I'm getting ready to make that disconnection on the machine, I'm anticipating a lot of fluid coming out and maybe continuing to dribble for quite some time. So went through my old caps, plugs, found something that will fit over the top of this side which i'm assuming will mean it should be able to fit over the other side if not i got a piece of rubber and a jubilee clamp there i'll use that to clamp over the end to keep it from dripping and losing too much hydraulic fluid but discovery one that's threaded so this might be interesting okay so first thing to do was remove those panels uh really it's just that one for this operation. That's the uh, the other panel there is from underneath the engine. I'm gonna change the engine oil while I'm underneath and working on things. And happy, sorry, happy existence. There is the clamps that I need to move, remove. And uh, as I take off those clamps, I should be able to capture most of the hydraulic fluid that's going to come out. So anyways, I don't think this is going to be too terribly hard, which is maybe why they didn't have anything about it in the book. Problem one, 
that plate right there. Originally it was part of the air conditioning. Air conditioning doesn't work when the hoses were cut. Uh, there's a cut hose. Anyways, um, and hopefully my camera will get back there. Sorry to change the angle, but I need to take out that bolt. And as you can see, that plate is in the way. It, it bolts uh, just behind here on the side. So I'm gonna have to get in there and do that. But um, there are my, those lugs. And so as you take off, there's a, a screen here that goes in front first. You can take that out. There's just two little wing nuts that on either edge that hold it down. And a uh, and that's just a chase there for that uh, screen to slide in. And once you take off those three nuts, that should loosen up the entire oil cooler and it should come out. That uh, line right there, that's just water. That's not the oil cooler leaking. But this down here is slightly concerning. That's a lot of rust. Uh, I'm not, I don't think it's leaking. There's certainly some uh, decay down here. <clears throat> I don't think replacing this oil cooler is a bad thing I think it's probably a good thing uh, I like I said I had replaced the radiator I thought that was gonna be my issue but what I have come to believe is this oil cooler is not flowing right and in doing so it's getting too hot from the hydraulics which means the hot air that gets sucked through this and then uh, uh, through the radiator which is just behind that into the engine bay that air is just super heated, so the engine itself is not cooling like it should. Anyways, back to the plate. I uh, need to take that off. We'll uh, get that off and jump back in. Okay, so that was a little harder than it should have been, but it's okay. So this bracket right here needed to come out and move just a little bit. You can kind of see it down in there. It is slotted for that plate that I was showing you. Uh, that's all the way down here now. It's not out yet. I'll take it out once I get the oil cooler out and I can uh, bend it around to the oil cooler space. Uh, now I'm gonna crack all these uh, things. I've already done the one on the bottom and it's dripping a little bit. We'll see how that how these things actually connect. Okay, so I'll switch cameras here. Uh, I decided to uh, attack the top connection first. And what we have here is we have a little metal ring over an O-ring. And I'm kind of shocked that the O-ring seems to be in pretty good condition. Um, and then there are these clamps here. These clamps are kind of interesting. You know, they have that. And then they have, basically it's a carriage bolt. If you can see that, okay. Uh, and you just tighten it put it around it and tighten it up seems to work okay I have a small little screwdriver here I'm gonna go ahead and try to pry that up oh well that came up a little easier than I thought let's try to pry the one down below oh, there's we have a broken connection okay and not too much hydraulic fluid which is kind of nice all right well that was easy let's do the bottom one all right, bear with me. I'm just going to leave this running. Let's set up the little camera here. I have there. Um, now, huh. So here's the problem is this pipe here is too close to this wall that's right here. And I see a couple of bolts. I don't know if I can take that out though. Um, I'm gonna turn off the camera here, do some investigating, try to figure out how to get this broke free. Okay, there is that plate. And yes, indeed, it was two, two bolts holding it in. Now it's removed. 
Uh, let's try to focus back in here on that. So I got a catch basin down there. We're just trying to get these metal covers off. And break that rubber seal here. There we go, we got flow. You know, I was anticipating having to replace these rubber bits, but I think we're good. And there it is, fully broken. And honestly, I have to say, there's not nearly as much hydraulic fluid coming out of there as I would have suspected. Um, that thing is just resting in there. I'm gonna uh, stop here, reposition the camera, and try to pull this thing out. So uh, you can see I got some stuff going on here. Uh, what I was trying to do is I was trying to take out that coupling pieces right there uh, so I could then lift it all up. Um, there's a little tab right there that's kind of getting in the way. But more importantly, I was running into a lot of resistance. So I'm going to climb up here, show you. So there's a little nut right there that's welded on. That is what holds the screen in place to keep, you know, too much junk from getting into the coolers. There's one on each side. There's another nut down here. Uh, for part of the uh, air compressor cooler uh, for AC. Um, and that's gonna be in the way as well. So uh, there was another video that I saw out there for uh, some gentlemen working on a Hitachi 270 oil cooler. One of the things that they ended up doing was um, taking and loosening up the radiator not pulling it necessarily but loosening it so there's some bolts right here i just did this the other day that's what's holding the radiator in place there's three on this side three on that side uh, i'm gonna go ahead and turn this off take those out loosen it up get enough space in there so that i can lift this thing up radiator free uh, some of you may have noticed I said three bolts. Uh, this is an aftermarket radiator. Uh, there's only three bolt holes that matched up with the uh, existing frame. So it only takes three bolts on this one. Um, so I just have a little socket piece in there. Sorry, that's part of my glove. Um, ratchet wrench in there. That's enough. Uh, spoiler alert, I've already got this thing partially out. I'm gonna reposition the camera here and we'll take it on out. Pull. Oh. Locks back on. Alright, so that's okay. That's fine. And boom goes the dynamite. It's out. Okay, not too hard. All right, I'm gonna set this down and uh, work on getting the new one ready to go. Uh, additional spoiler alert, I have cleaned up all of the uh, fittings there, um, just wiped them down, got all the big grit out, uh, put them back on. Um, the threaded piece, Notice that it's threaded here on this one too. I can only assume that that is for the dash three be, because I can't imagine that the dash one uh, would be threaded like that. So that's why this cooler probably works for both. Now I'm gonna set this little unit down here and I'm gonna go ahead and measure these. Uh, that is approximately 11 inches there. And that one is 10 and seven eighths uh, that one looks right at 11 and that one's 10 and seven eighths okay um, so the it's kind of what I suspected is these uh, 
mount holes are not the same everywhere. I had the similar issue with the aftermarket radiator. As good as these things are, they're not the factory spec. So um, let me see if I can measure this out here. You know, obviously this isn't perfect, but there's that. That one's 11. You see it. shaky but let's see if I can get this it's it's a little short of 11 so uh, I'm gonna come over here to the uh, the original cooler pull out my tape measure again sorry about that lock it down so let's just compare apple to apple apples to apples right at 11 Right at 11. So, um, which tells me that uh, I probably just need to enlarge the holes that are on the excavator because all they are is just a hole in the in the uh, steel. So, if I do that, then I should be able to get the um, cooler to mount up just fine. Um, you notice too that this cooler is pretty thin. That cooler's a lot thicker. Uh, it's probably going to fill some gap um, in there. So uh, one of the other things that's that I notice on this one, hopefully this is all coming through okay, is you know it still has the uh, the foam there to create a, uh, a a seal between the two units. So um, not sure if I'll be replacing that or if I'll just try to stick something else in there. Uh, as I put this back together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the cooler first before I uh, cinch down the radiator. That way I have enough room and space to get everything together. But I'm going to go ahead and throw this cooler in, uh, expecting rain later today. So I'm going to try to get this buttoned up before it rains so I can see a little bit better this way. So, okay, uh, I have one bolt in uh, and there's a little misalignment there. I don't think that's a huge issue there. But one issue that is a problem is there's the mount hole and you see where that is. So I didn't measure across and I need to do some double checking on that. See how I can make this line up a little better. Um, looks like it's they're not as quite as wide. Um, but it is in there. Everything else seems to be okay. Just a quick follow-up, uh, measured the distance across there. It's 24 inches on both, so uh, clearly some of the apparatus has shifted a little bit on me. One of the other things you'll notice here too is while I, before I put in the other radiator, I took out this offending piece. This is what it looked like. Um, and it's part of the uh, air conditioning system. I don't need that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything put back together here. Again, it's supposed to start raining. Um, I'm gonna to try to change the oil before I get put this thing back to work as well, the engine oil, so uh, I'm gonna keep going. Okay, all in. Everything seems to uh, line up okay. Um, this is the one exception. I'm, I'm not happy with that. You can't quite see it there, but it's, it's not quite straight on, but it's, I think the, the way that clamp works, I think it'll, you know, pick up for um, any problems there. Um, this one was just fine. Uh, I still have to reattach that radiator and I'll probably end up uh, trying to find some sort of foam to end up filling that gap there. There is a piece of foam from the uh, radiator itself attached to the radiator itself. I am gonna have to put that uh, other plate back on that went down here it's just two bolts that'll be easy enough but uh, I got to come back and also uh, put in the the slide there for the screen but I think in general it's a pretty nice product like it and um, I happen to buy this one from a, a company that I bought several parts for this excavator um, I use eBay. Uh, there's other places you can buy it. I think even Amazon. Uh, it, the company I use was Motrol, M-O-T-R-O-L, if I remember right. 
I've also used a company called Sinocomp in the past. They do pretty well. Uh, also, uh, I think they got the same products, frankly, but you know, um, they're selling a lot of products for these machines aftermarket and any, oh, the rain has held off and it's just starting to rain now. So uh, I timed this perfectly, everything's sealed. So now I can go have some lunch. Um, overall, this took three, maybe four hours of me trying to figure it out. Big trick was uh, loosening the radiator and allowing it to tip back. All right, well, thanks for watching. Have a great uh, day.